Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to the vlog. So, if anyone had seen a previous vlog before, I came down to Wales to train at the Chris Reese Academy. Back here again for another week of training in Swansea. You got the man, the SBG killer, Aiden James in the vlog again. He So last time, he was training for a fight with Tommy Martin. Scrapped him, TKO in the second round, and then he just, oh, third round. And he just panned uh, Franz Malambo as well. In the first round, so two good opponents in a row doing very well. What are you now in your what's your pro career record now? 3 0. 3 0, yeah. So check out Aiden, fight for Brave. Here's a few uh, essentials I picked up for the week, just keeping everything super basic. So you've got some kitchen foil, bananas, oh, it's all kind of usual stuff really. Wraps, tuna, honey, apples, Brazil nuts, dates. Everyone knows I love my dates. Got some peanut butter, almond milk, granola, mayo, and then I've got some stuff upstairs, a little. Uh, veg and meat and then in here who have we got in here so we got Boys. Oban who is fighting you you said what are you fighting for because I'll get it wrong you're fighting uh, for the Cage Warriors Go European Grand Prix final December 8th December so 8th. check him out and then we got the junior European champ Rowan I think there's his medal somewhere That's the difference. molding in bed that is the difference and we got the Fortnite in the backdrop too the scenes scenes people so on the way to the first session with some of the guys now training starts quarter past 10 we've been starting at 10 but 15 minutes later today a little bit later in the week wednesday midweek been training since monday so we get a shorter lighter morning session in and then a couple hours in the evening so it'll be like just squad in the morning and then in the evening we have a nogi class with ash so this week it's jujitsu so we've been focusing on like half butterfly Last time I came it was wrestling week, so we did a lot of like nogi stand-up rounds and uh, drilling technique on that. And then we do an MMA specific class afterwards, so that can be a mixture of drills or text barring, however it's kind of mixed up each day, quite uh, a bit of like specific pad work and movement. We're at the gym now, we're training on this side. They, they've they changed it up a bit since last time I was here. They got these new mats in, they just painted the walls and yesterday I ignored the wet paint. So my coat has got slightly ruined, hopefully I'll be able to get it off but we'll have to see about that, life goes on. And then they're putting up a load of bags too, so that'd be cool. And then I think on this wall, I think it's this wall, they're going to put on a cage. So they got padded walls for wrestling so it's a pretty nice setup to be fair it's looking like it's just going to be me Rowan Oban and then Brett um, who's on the vlog last time as well so that will be cool but Scotty's in Cardiff seeing his mum he's one of the other like regular team members and then yeah El Aiden's ill as well so uh, yeah I'm not sure exactly what we do I presume Brett will be taking the session I think Chris the head coach does the squad sessions twice a week in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, you see the barcode? Yeah. Okay now, yeah. Just so they see the side. They see the barcode. You take, you take a photo of that. And that's what yeah. This year, I need the badge. She's stitching it. Yeah. Yeah. That's three, uh, three reasons you look at. Yeah. You know, it's a nice uh, jacket right. when it's got its own clothes it, hanger. Um, it's wet paint up there. <laughs> <laughs> I've had one first. Yeah. I've had yeah. me second. I've had yeah. third. It's not like a case of like. They're going to be super difficult, hard in sessions, they're not going to be really super hard. Just going over combinations really because the hard, the hard sessions tonight. Then tomorrow then they'll be a bit harder. Took a three minute timer on. So I get raw on or something to put a fucking out of it on. What size t-shirt is that? Medium. Is that a medium? No. Hard then is large. That is a... Large. Large um, Right, so then... With the rest of the rounds then they're gonna be it's gonna be three threes. So that is eighteen minutes then. So it's gonna be like three minutes. The wrestling drill is like basically the guy doing the wrestling drill, the guy who's getting the work done on him. Obviously I want you to be awkward, you're not stopping any takedowns, you know. I don't mind you changing levels, so it's like if we want you to double leg into me. Hey, so you wanna win? Shoot a double leg and he's in on the double leg. I don't mind you Base in the disc for a bit, yeah. but like, I'm not looking to underhook, underhook and push them off. Yeah. You know, them sessions on Friday when we're doing fight, fight, all wrestling. Yeah. And we with the death then, it's like going a pound. Now, why I started working with Scotty, sorry, you won't be back, 
So if I'm an opportunity and I've got a problem in row one, I'm not looking to obviously start hitting him in the face properly. If his hands up, he doesn't mind it. You can hit him in the arm. I always aim for the shoulders. I do see when I'm when I'm going and pounding. Yeah. Because it's just you're not going to forget to punch him in the face. In the fight. It's not as if you say it's muscle memory, but it's not going to be muscle memory because of, in a fight you're going to hit them in the face. Okay. Yeah. I want you to move in. So obviously this scar position. Like, I know I love the guard. I love being in the guard. I love breaking on elbows. But I don't want this. If you want you in you, I want you breaking the guard, passing. Throwing strikes, yeah. you know, Rowan can give his back up, you know, I don't mind that because it's his goal next, so he can, he can give you a bit of bad habits. So realistically, how many times have you seen the fight where someone gets caught with that right punch? Okay, I've had enough now, I'm going to get my back up, like, okay? So then I want you to take the back, I want, like, you're working on flattening out. It's another big one I like for the minute. Like, um, well, sorry, one, sorry, it's going to be a bit uncomfortable, go on your knees. So, like, flattening out's a big thing for me for ground and pound. Where like we'll get in a position where I got I got Rowan's wrist here, yeah. flatten up this way. I'll try and trap his wrist underneath him. So when we get to here, drive the hips through. Yeah. And what happens is we, we develop bad habits when we do this um, flattening out. Because what we do, we put our hands on the floor and start throwing ground a pound. Yeah. This this takes the pressure off Rowan so you can get back with the turtle. Yeah. I don't want that. So when I'm going here, my hands should be on the floor. If you want to rest your hands, rest it on him. Okay. Then Rowan tries to posture up now, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. Okay, so we work on that as well when doing the transition. When we're in there, you know, I usually do that when I'm grappling. Obviously, I don't do it all the time because it starts to hurt people's backs and stuff. But we need that scenario, then it's easy to get subs, ground and pound. Like I, I, I've been off the sub and go for ground and pound. I would. You know? I think I should say the same as well. If you're in that position where you're comfortable, rather than trying to go for like a, you'd go for a chop, but say an arm bar, you try to go for an arm bar, then you take the pressure off and you're kind of going backwards in, right? So have a little warm up not for five minutes and then we'll get cracking, we'll do the rounds first. I don't want you blasting the, the pads hard, but the last of my elbows are starting to hurt a little bit. Your elbows are hurt. So like what we're doing now more is a technical pad session. Yes, you will get a sweat on. I want you moving around, I don't want you flat footed, I want you moving a little bit. And then after that, then we'll go into that, this drill, which will give you a big sweat then, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So you can mention life. Try and go here. If Ron feels okay, it's a good shot, then we'll get taken down. Go down. Yeah. When we get to you now, row one, and it's not trying to stop me, it's just being awkward. He's going here. Throw and strike. Yeah. Obviously, I know. You know, he's not hitting me back, so I'll hit him back. Stand up. Throw strikes. Move back in. Yeah. Ooh. You know, it's realistic then. Like I know, I, uh, about five or six times I could have hit him flat on the face. Yeah. But this is a drill where it's like. Where you're mad, his feet was just staying there. You went by his feet slightly, yes, all right. Doing you know? the distance. Yeah. yeah, you're just being awkward. Yeah. You know, so I'm here now. If Rowan does get my leg here, and he's here, if he feels like there's pressure there, yeah. that he has to stay down, he can stay down. If he wants to come up to the feet, I've got to try and break it. Now we go here. Yeah. Now we're there. Yeah. I'm here. Now we go back to the shoot. Yeah. The guy is literally actively defending. Not actively trying to like sub, not actively trying to reverse, just being yeah. awkward, okay?
people just done with training first session out of the way boom and now we're gonna get some food the guys have just gone to Costa so probably have to catch up with them soon but I need to get my munch on so we're gonna hit this Tesco up been here before this place is only like five minutes from the gym it's got a lot going on one of the boys has just gone to Greg's don't think I've ever actually had a Greg's which people are always surprised at. I tell you what it was cold at the gym and now walking through the frozen section barely feel my toes. Successful little food trip, just got uh, some practical stuff. Got some mangoes, some uh, almond apricot bars and some beef, but yeah, eating very uh, segmented at the moment. So people back now after being out, got a coffee to warm me up, all my fingers and toes are now feeling good again. I'm up here, upstairs, where they've put the fridge, which is a bit weird as they had a bit of a bedroom swap about. Um, it's too noisy downstairs, they've got the washer on, so I will show you what I'm eating quickly, super basic. This is what we call a gourmet meal, always gourmet when in the crack den. Just got some oven chicken, spinach, a wrap, gonna slam some mayonnaise on that. Earlier I had some grapes and I'm probably gonna have an apple and some Brazil nuts too. But yeah, that's pretty much it at the moment guys, just eating, recovering. And trying to get that energy back up for training so I'll catch you at the next session. Sophie we're at the second session now. No gi with Coach Ash, then we've got MMA. I'll show you a bit of the drills. And they post this foot up. On, uh, it sounds really shit to say, but I can just I can sift you. I can I can don't if I don't move at all, MD will never ever ever pass. It's just impossible. It, it, it just you cannot from the position it needs in you cannot pass. The leg you need to pass is this one that's on the floor. By putting this foot up, all his weight is now on that knee. How can you pass? It's just impossible. Like, yeah, he can stop me. He can stop me trying to elevate and move him, fine. But Indy, pass. The f exactly. See the first thing you gotta do? Look, you do that. Let's go, yeah, no worries, cool. You, like, he cannot pass again with the one leg up. If this foot comes up, you, you just don't have to be that concerned about it. Tomorrow's class, we are going to look into when that leg comes up. You know, we're going to look into it when he comes up there. Like trying to attack this leg more than anything, or try to sweep when they can attack this leg. Why is that? The first leg up there, I don't concern myself with. Nine times at a time, that leg goes up. I just bring this foot out. Just bring this foot out, just kick it away, and just keep putting pressure on it. They can try to step it, whatever he wants to do. I like my foot to the floor, not my knee to the floor, and foot to the hip. It's one of my favorite positions. If I go through the half of the butterfly, I'd always go to this guy. It's like foot up, knee down. And he tries to pass this again, it's just not possible. And again, you can just start to, start to elevate. Alright, guys. I'm going to show you some of that very similar to Ryan's last ride. I feel threatening. Because the only pass he can get is when this knee starts to go from that to pass. Does that make sense? Okay, one, two, three. Man like Scotty P. Man like Scott. Man like, oh, man like pirate. Instagram. Scotty P. Slide in the DM. Good question. Okay? Like, if I was going to sweep, would I keep the arm in or arm out for the guillotine? Okay? When it comes to the, the guillotine, I'm like this, I've got this control, and I'm on my side with the half of a butterfly in. No, I frame my legs never change, okay? I'll ask what swift is, and nothing changes. When I've got the head, okay, the main, the main key thing I've got to do is I've got to try and not let his head look punched to the mat. It's fun. If I let if I let Brett's back go straight like this, he's got a real nice like tripod frame here, like shooting Brett as hard enough as it is. No, this would be this would be now impossible to shoot Brett. Like, I've got to make sure I get his head tucked under. And that's going from that armpit like compression curling on the head. Okay? 
But if I want a sweet bread with a butterfly sweep, I'll keep my arm over. I'll keep the I'll keep um, the head head and arm in. I won't switch to this to sweep. If you switch to sweep, we talked about this last time. The more I start trying to elevate, Brett could use that hand to start trying to pass the other way. So Brett could use this hand. Whereas if I keep over like this and Brett just use that arm, it's good for absolutely nothing. I can stay here, I said I can try to bring this leg out and start trying to use this to sweep as well. Okay? If I want a normal sweep of butterfly hook, I'll always come over that. If I'm like, I can't move this guy at all, okay? So this is actually what I do to Chris and Brett. Um, ironically, he's just too, too, too hard to kind of sweep. So like this, and I cannot sweep him. I just switch to this, and then I'll just try to put the guillotine as hard as I can. And as soon as I start to do this, I know Brett's going to do this. Then I go, cool. And I'll just change something. I want to finish the guillotine, I want to try to use it as a sweep. If I want to finish the, the guillotine against something like Brett, then I've got to use this foot to trap down. Because look, if I trap this down, I go here, and Brett tries to roll, I should try to hold him in this position. Hence why I don't like to do this. I feel like I lose a lot of my framework. My legs are working really well as a frame right now. I get to this, and now I try to go high on the guillotine. Are we set to Okay, guys. So, the last thing, the last thing we're going to do tonight, guys, okay, the last thing we're going to do tonight, um, is obviously, when I've got the, the wrist control, at all times the Kimura is available, yeah? Okay, like it's just something you should bear in mind. I don't try to force a Kimura really. I don't, I'm not like sitting here thinking, oh, I want a Kimura, I want a Kimura, I want a Kimura. I usually go for the Kimura if um, he gives me the opportunity. I don't think a Kimura is an opportunistic thing. I think you could definitely try to go for it and, and you work it. But at the end of the day, if like, for example, the hand turns in slightly, Kimura, every single time. You know, like you try to start bringing your foot into this leg. Brett uses his hand to try and push my leg away. That type of stuff. Kimura, every single day of the week. Alright, I'd rather hit the Kimura because I have to compromise this. My whole control on my left side, I've got to compromise. If I leave go of this against someone like Brett, and Brett uses this to start beating me, it's a really bad time for me, you know? So I'd rather only go for Kimura when I'm like, man, I'm gonna cinch this in. Okay? So now I'm looking for this. I'm looking for the hand turning, the elbow. For example, if Brett keeps his hand tight like this, but then Brett commits his head between my head and my shoulder, he starts pushing this way, see? This is a great opportunity to push and sit. Yeah, to use that same stretch we're doing, and then catch over the shoulder. It's a great opportunity you know, to get over this. I don't need this, I just need this. I need to get over this side and get my armpit over that shoulder. Once I get here, look, I'm not interested in the Kimura grip, but I can't get it right now. I get my shoulder over, I clap my elbow, then I start to sit back. Then I catch my Kimura grip. Okay? A lot of people try to catch a Kimura grip here. There's no point. Lock your elbow. Sit. Catch. Now the first thing I'd always try is to punch his hand to his hip. And again, just sweep him. Sweep. I don't try to do the Kimura. Okay? Even like here, if me and Brett started this position, we said one, two, three, go. Chance of me come over to him compared to Brett, keep the like punch his arm straight for example, is, is low for me, high for him. Okay, when you get better with this type of stuff, how many of you guys get tapped from half guard like this, where they just go, and then tap you the Kimura? Alright, it's not that high percentage. The, the him, he can roll, he can put his hands together, he can put his hand on his leg, hand on his hip. There's so many things he can grab hold of on the way. So, sometimes I'd rather just go, cool, and I go underneath him, and then start to sweep him. Or use this for the legs, use this for the arms, use this for the back take. Okay, this is the, the possibilities are endless once you get the core grip. Alright, but the focus has to be just work, 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 work. His head changes sides. Little kick, no guillotine attempt. Cool, no worries. Pass this over instead. Happy, any questions? Okay, one, two, three. Yes, yes, the crock. Yes. Crock the deal. <laughs> Isn't that a drug, the crock roll? In like Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crock <laughs> Just a cheap heroin. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Doing tap, Scott. We're gonna start with just like controlling, just controlling, okay? Because at the end of the day, you need the ability to keep them on the cage quite comfortably before you would think about pairing or moving, okay? A lot of you guys uh, probably aren't very comfortable there, but then they stay in here, and then when you throw this, and this guy goes under her, and it rolls me off. That's a very, very likely scenario, okay? So I just want to start with just trying to count for finding out like, are we too much on, are we too much off them? Are we too on them? We're doing like, I just want to start getting comfortable there. You know, it's too much bread. It's their bread and butter. You know, it's where we're most comfortable. Uh, but it's something that everyone needs to be comfortable with. All right, guys. So we're gonna start here on the cage with the underhook. All right, guys. This is just starting straight forward. You guys start wrist control if you want to. You can contest the wrist control. That's fine. We just start on the wall. We like the grip on the single. And all I'm gonna do is just try and keep them on the wall, just gonna try and move off, like run me off the wall if he wants to. I'm just gonna try and keep the pain and feel comfortable with you. If I wanna switch sides, I can either switch with like a full change, or I can just do a switch side stay high. All right, guys? But I just want you to get comfortable holding on the wall. Nothing too, not super intense, okay, guys? It's not like where Brett pins me to the wall, for example. Like you guys saw the other night in Rex, like Brett had me like this, not Brett, come on, put it on. And I was literally like, I, you know, I just couldn't move or do anything. Like, I don't want it that strict, okay? Because what I want to look at tonight is the ability for Brett to either pep, hold me and pair for me, okay? Or release, throw, and then re-engage. Or obviously put me down. As I'm getting up, pair for me, okay? So I want to look at just the damage on this person's point of view, damage limitation from this point of view. All right, guys. We're looking at those three different controls. So when they come off, they stay on you. They take you down. All three times, we should be going pop, 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 pop. They should be feeling it, okay? So people back now at the Crack Den, and it's a bit of a full house, to be honest. We got me and Oban kipping in Rowan's room, but now it is time for food. Like this is the final thing of the day, and I haven't really been weighing myself. I weigh myself every day normally, so I reckon I'm gonna come out of this a bit heavier than usual. I've been eating quite a lot of carbs and stuff. So again guys, theme of the day, not the most appetizing basic, but it's gonna get the job done. Tuna wrap, mayonnaise, some dates on the side, and then if I'm still going, I reckon I probably will, some of this super nutty granola, which is pretty tasty. But that's gonna do it for today. Anyway guys, we've got the croc making some squash in the background. Quite a lot of technique and stuff going on today, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Peace.